Just like you do not shout a spouse for a mistake they have made. Some of us for food, we make such a big issue that the knot breaks. Your spouse burnt the food. Mashallah, today we had some beautiful food. With this time I've been eating a lot in Colombo. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May Allah grant us ease. You know, I was thinking, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the food of Jannah. One wonders if there is such beautiful food. What about Jannah? What will there be? Subhanallah. In order to get there, you need to make sure you are the best to your spouse. Khayrukum, khayrukum li ahli. The hadith says the best from amongst you are those who are best to their wives. The best from amongst you are those who are best to their wives. Subhanallah. Best to their family members, best to your spouse, best to your husband. How do you treat them? Some people, the wife has burnt the food. Do you know that's a test from Allah? That's a test from Allah. He's watching. And to be honest with you, the angels are writing. What's your reaction? That's all that's happening. Nothing else. She might never burn it again. And we get up and say, do you know how much money is wasted here? Do you know this food is rubbish? It's rotten. It's bad. It's filthy. Throw it out. Is that the attitude? Well, why did you get married? That is someone's daughter. How are you speaking to her? Have a bit of shame. Your children are watching. If you have committed a crime, that is one thing, but you are teaching your children how to commit a crime that they will commit in a bigger way. This is why I encourage people who want to get married. If you want to get married to someone, go and look at their parents. Look at how they are living. If their parents are living correctly with beauty, with respect, with honor, it would mean that they have learned beauty, respect and honor. But if their parents are fighting like cats and dogs, and if their parents are swearing each other, and there is a relationship that is totally absurd, then it does not mean the child is bad. No, it doesn't. But there is a likelihood that the child might have qualities of that nature, especially if it's a male. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. It's not a rule, but it is something we need to consider. It is something we need to think about. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to mend our ways and habits in such a way that they do not seep through to the next generation. This knot is a blessed knot, subhanallah. It is to be tied for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why when tying the knot in Islam, when tying the knot in Islam, you will find very clearly that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it easy. And he's asked us to say a few good words. That is the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every time there was a nikah, there was an officiation of a marriage. We find Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say a few good words, you know, advice to those who are not married, to those who have come together, perhaps to those who are still waiting. He would say, Ya ma'ashara shabab, man istata'a min kumul ba'ata falyatazawwaj. Oh youth, whoever is able and capable to get married, do not waste time. Don't delay, let you should get married. It's a, it's a piece of advice. And mashallah, you see your friend and he's excited. He's sitting there and you know, he's saying, mm, I'm about to say yes to the Imam, subhanallah. So now he looks up and he says, uh, the Imam is asking, have you accepted? He says, yes, yes. It happened to me once where, and I, I mentioned it uh, not too long ago as well, where there was a youngster so excited and I'm busy telling myself, son, I hope you're ex as excited as today, as you are today, one year down the line. Allahu Akbar. May Allah help us. Today we cry. We make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant, you know, a goodness and make this bond solid. They say triple X glue. You know why they call it triple X? If I were to tell you this video is triple X, what does it mean? I think everyone knows what it means. It means it's no go area. You will hurt yourself. You will harm yourself. Don't watch it. Leave it. Triple X. This is something X rated. Imagine the glue is not X-rated, it's double, triple X. They call it triple X glue. When you tie the knot, it should be with triple X glue. There is no haram that is there besides very, very little. And that too, you would have to learn. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. That's your woman. You are intimate with her. That's your man. That's your husband. You are intimate with this person. You can talk to them. You can undress in their presence. Subhanallah, whatever you'd like within the limits of Allah, you can get it done. MashaAllah, there is nothing X-rated there because that is your spouse. What a blessed knot. Allah tells you, yes, we know you have needs. We know you have desires. We know you have a lot within you that is there, that is instilled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will show you a dignified manner of fulfillment of this. We will show you a respectful, respectable manner of fulfillment of this. And believe me, it is a give and take, not just a take and take. Allahu Akbar. It's a give and take. People sometimes think that, you know, my wife should do as I say. 
No, sometimes you should do as she says as well, where you are wrong and she's right. She has the right to correct you. In fact, it is her duty to correct you. You are the spouse. She will earn Jannah if she corrects you, getting you up for Salah. Don't just think I'm a, I'm a husband. Don't you dare get me up. You're interrupting my sleep. She has the right to pour water on your face, my brother. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. May Allah help us. Getting up for Salah. It's the duty of your spouse to get you up for Salah. She is sinful if she doesn't. So sometimes you have to listen to your wife as well. She has the right to say things. She is a human being. So she might have a better brain than yours. Admit, admit. Hey, the men are looking at me today. I see what's happening. No, subhanallah, it's a reality. She might come up with better ideas than yours. She might be more qualified than you are in terms of religious knowledge and various other things. She might know how to handle the, the home better than you. She might come up with ideas. Look at Khadija bint Khawaili radiallahu anha. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the highest. No competition, no debate. Like we said moments ago, never ever a bad habit or an evil quality from the beginning all the way to the end. Perfect, subhanallah, in every way. Kana khuluquhu al-Quran. His character was made up of what the Quran teaches completely. But he used to listen to his spouse sometimes because that was a teaching, not because anything was wrong. I give you an example. Khadija bint Khawailid radiallahu anha at the time of revelation, what did she do? When he said, Zammiluni or Dattiruni, you know, cover me, envelop me. She embraced her husband and she offered support. This is why at the time of difficulty, offer your spouse support either way. Husband to wife, wife to husband, offer her support. You don't have to say, listen, I've got nothing to do with this. I'm out of here. Subhanallah. That's your spouse. You offer them support. You tell them, look, don't worry. She says, Kalla wallahi la Allahu abadan. Never. Allah will never let you down. Allah will never disgrace you, never embarrass you. You are such a good man. How many of us can tell about our wives or our husbands that they are such good men or women and tell it to someone else altogether? Meaning, are we able to do that? You might tell your wife, oh, you're so lovely. And, and, and you're saying, oh, it was quite hard to say that. <laughs> be genuine, be honest. Look at, the, look at how lovely she really is. It is character, it is conduct, it is sacrifice. Khadija bint Khawailid radiallahu anha says, I have an idea. Let's go to my cousin, this Waraqa bin Nawfal. Let's go to him. Perhaps he will come up with something. Perhaps he will know. So she thought up ideas. Muhammad وسلم, did not have to listen to her. Subhanallah. But he walked with her. He went out with her. He heard and subhanallah, he came back. What do we learn from that? We are not like Muhammad وسلم. We are not prophets of Allah. We are nowhere near. We are imperfect mortals. We are imperfect human beings who make mistakes every day. But we don't want to have, we don't want to lend an ear to a spouse whom we've married, subhanallah, whom we've actually married. And she's just giving us an idea to say, look, I believe maybe you should resolve the matter this way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and may he open our doors.